let us then go to Shor's algorithm. Okay, so uh, what we will do is we will first consider the simplified case. Okay, so where you know uh, I am going to say that you know let Q be some sufficiently large number. So, let us say that you know Q is uh, much greater than even n squared where uh, capital N is what we are trying to factor ok and uh, let us assume that uh, uh, the order of the element right. So, Shor's algorithm is going to let us compute order x right which is what we wanted uh, according to the previous theory that we developed. So, I am going to assume that R in fact uh, divides Q. So, this is what I was saying that you know I will not in fact show you everything that I need to because this is a pretty bad assumption I mean it is an unjustified assumption. The idea would be that we will see how it works in this case and then uh, you know if I remove this assumption then uh, turns out that you know there is some that there, there is a bunch of uh, complexity that comes up. But all of it can be handled by using I mean the, the broad outline will still st stay the same we just need to handle you know instead of getting uh, uh, instead of getting integers we will start we will you know get fractions which we will need to round and so on ok. So, we will not go too much into that. So, we are just going to make the simplified assumption and uh, first see the algorithm ok and yeah. Uh, I, I leave it as a reading exercise to uh, to sort of study the more general case where where uh, we do not make this assumption ok. So, for the case where you know we assume that uh, R divides Q by the way here note just think about what we are doing right. So, we have this uh, you know we have this uh, n that we want to factor and uh, what we are doing is we are sort of trying to uh, trying to find the order of an element order of an element x which we, we were denoting by r uh, and uh, we saw that you know finding the order of this element is, is sufficient for us. So, here we have no real way of knowing how to pick q this is what I am get I am sort of uh, emphasizing that actually we do not know how to pick q, but uh, we will just choose some large q which will be sufficient for us and uh, as I said already we will consider these cases separately ok. So, yeah I just wanted to emphasize that you know we really do not know how to pick q we will we'll just pick something and hope for the best. So, uh, the algorithm itself is you know very simple to what uh, similar to what we have seen already. So, you know you you start with uh, you know registers uh, 0 tensor 0 ok. So, here uh, this could be sufficiently long. Okay. And now what you do is you prepare the superposition uh, over all inputs by applying the Hadamard. ok. So, so far this is uh, standard right. So, we took our initial 0 registers we applied the uh, uh, Hadamard transform to get uh, you know to get the superposition over all inputs 
and now uh, you know now we need to define a function that we care about right. So, let us define f of a as uh, x to the a mod n ok. So, this uh, this x is chosen uniformly right and uh, yeah. So, we want to we want to find the order. So, now note that f is distinct on 0 to r minus 1 ok. So, uh, remember that the order x is denoted by r ok. So, now we will apply our function oracle as usual for this function. Now, who can tell me what we should do next to so measure the second register? Good. Okay, so, when we measure the second register as we have seen all the uh, input values that are inconsistent with the measured value these will disappear right and we will renormalize. So, what we will end up with is you know something like this. So, you can convince yourselves that uh, this is the right normalization factor. Ok, so I am just uh, using L as uh, you know the the uh, some sort of character some characteristic value which gives us a fixed f of l okay so now what we got is we got this uh, we got this uh, superposition over all these inputs that are consistent with a given f of l value. Now, in general what do we do at this point? We just throw away the second uh, register, we do not care about that anymore. Now, uh, can I measure? So, yeah, we cannot measure at this point because every time we measure we will get a different l, right. So, we, we would not get anything consistent. So, instead what we will now do is apply the QFT. So, apply QFT and the, the very important thing is that you know this drops L right. So, uh, we talked about this quite a lot while doing Simon's algorithm that it becomes independent of, of the color. So, uh, good. So, having applied the QFT, what am I going to get? I am going to get something like this 1 over square root r summation k equal to 0 r minus 1 omega to the k l ok k q over r. Uh, 
Okay, so this is uh, just the QFT here. I am directly writing the points on which you know I am going to get uh, non-zero probability. So when we did Simon's algorithm over Zn, we spent a lot of time arguing why you know once you apply the QFT, all your probability will be concentrated on points that look like this, right? So let's not do it again. So, uh, yeah, so you know, we are just saying now that well, QFT looks like this. So, this is just a normalization factor, this uh, you know, 1 over square root r, anyone can compute and see uh, you know what normalization you should get. Omega to the KL is you know uh, the Fourier coefficients, and uh, these points follow by the analysis that we had done last time, okay. So, we, we get something like this. And that is it, right. So, now we, uh, we measure. So, now that we measure, we are going to get some, you know, kq over r. Now, uh, remember that, you know, we uh, assumed that uh, r divides q, in this case, we assumed that. You can also check that, you know, uh, gcd of k and q over r is going to be 1 with good probability. So, I am not proving this again, I am just uh, sort of uh, saying it, okay. So, uh, then computing the GCD of Q with KQ over R should give us uh, Q over R. Okay, and this in turn gives us R because we know Q. Yeah, so it is it is the same idea that we have seen before and uh, yeah as I as I was joking at the beginning of class, uh, I am in fact cheating here because uh, what I am showing you is the simplified analysis, you know, when, when we assume that uh, R divides Q. In that case, actually the algorithm and the analysis becomes extremely similar to this uh, Simons over Z n which we already did. Uh, the more complicated case is, you know, when the function is almost periodic. So, you know, when R does not divide Q. In that case, you know what what we will need to do is you know talk about points that look like this, right. So, uh, we have to worry about rounding and you know whether the analysis works out and so on. So, I spend a lot of time actually thinking about uh, what is the best way to present uh, this algorithm. Obviously, Shor's algorithm is uh, sort of like a grand finale for us. In, in this course, uh, intermediate at least. But in the end, I decided that, uh, you know, going into all of the, going into all of the involved analysis that handles these issues, I feel is uh, worthwhile, but maybe not in class. So, it is something which I encourage you to read offline. I will just make a few remarks about it here. But I feel that the idea of the algorithm is perhaps best understood by looking at the simplified case, okay. So, the, the uh, additional care that we need in, in the general case is something that is, uh, yeah, it is something that uh, I think is better read offline than, than uh, for us to do it in class. So, I will, I will as I said talk a little bit about the general case just to, just to give some uh, intuition. But are there any questions about uh, what we have done so far? So, remember we started by looking at uh, discrete log and factoring. We said that discrete log reduces to period finding. We said that factoring reduces to order finding. We did this in, in some steps, right, finding a non-trivial square root of 1 mod n and then uh, you know, finding an order which will give us a non-trivial uh, square root of uh, 1 mod n. And then we, we developed this algorithm to find the order. So, the algorithm is uh, quite similar to uh, the algorithm that we saw last time, right. And yeah, it is it's this that you, you prepare the input superposition, right. You apply the function oracle, 
the function is uh, you know x to the a mod n right you are trying to find uh, uh, the order of x and then uh, you measure and you apply QFT and, and you measure again and you analyze and show that you will get uh, you know multiples of Q over R which knowing Q allow you to recover R. So, this is just the idea uh, okay. So, this is uh, this is uh, shows. So, let me just say a few words like I promised about the general case. So, yeah, so need to analyze, you know, points like uh, kq over r uh, rounded, right, and uh, can show. that we get constructive interference at points that are close to multiples of q over r. Okay, and basically what we, we can show is that you know if you simply round q over r to the nearest uh, integer multiple, then that suffices to recover r with some probability. So, there is some you know uh, care required you have to look at continued fractions and so on. Uh, but yeah, like I said I felt it would not be worthwhile for us to spend too much class time on this. So, yeah, this is the order finding algorithm which in turn gives us factoring and uh, yeah, also discrete log. All right, so we will end class here today.